No. Hi. Uh, all right. Scott back with you for part two of my NAB Express show. Will NAB Express introduce new products from Adobe, Apple, uh, Sony? You know, NAB is usually a big show. It was canceled back in April. So what will NAB Express bring us? Well, today, uh, Nick Alexander and I talk about Blackmagic Design um, and the advancements that Blackmagic has made very recently with their Pocket 6K and Pocket 4K cameras. Um, this is a real big nerd out, like all these conversations are. Um, the good news is I have some more filmmaking stuff coming up, including a sci-fi short that I directed, acted in, edited in, um, and did most everything else except for a really cool visual effect that a friend of mine, Charlie, made. So that'll come up soon. But for now, here's a deep dive into black magic cameras. That's it. You know, that's the thing that is so, it's so cool about black magic's raw format is like, it creates tiny files, like a fraction of what you're describing. Like if a minute of ProRes is, I don't know, call it, let's say it's two gigs, like, a minute of black magic raw is going to be like 750 megabytes. Mm. Um, I mean, like it's, it's like half, but you can only use it and resolve. Like it's I just so frustrating. And it's like, they, they've got this great codec that is, you know, uh, produces great images according to them, but you can't use it unless you use resolve. And, it's fine if people want to use Resolve. I, I just don't, and I'm probably not going to edit something in Resolve just to use that codec because ProRes is also quite good, and I can just do that in Final Cut. But I wish that Final Cut supported it. Yeah, you know, and that's, I think, where this conversation is going. You know, I come from, like you, I edit in Final Cut Pro X, and I have been using ProRes for... Um, several different projects that, you know, I want to, again, output the best possible image that I can for a project. And so that's, that's kind of my workflow right now. I, I shoot on um, Panasonic cameras, the GH5, and then the um, full frame mirrorless, uh, mirrorless camera, the S1. And, you know, I'm at a point where maybe in the next one to three months, I'm looking into investing into a, another camera. Um, right. Just based on my projects, I need to have another additional camera for uh, select projects. So that, of course, makes me uh, think, well, do I want to stick with Panasonic? Uh, do I want to try something else? And, and really, the Blackmagic, uh, the, the 4K and 6K cameras you know, came to my attention. But like you just mentioned, I, I thought, well... You know, I operate in post-production in, in Final Cut. And mm -hmm. I, gosh, maybe a few days I've experienced the uh, Resolve, but I really don't want to code to Resolve or yeah. even if I, you know, other um, NLEs as I feel so, it's not that I have to edit in Final Cut. It's just, it's the best experience for me. So yeah. it's not like, Resolve can't meet my needs. It's just the experience is so good that I can't imagine going back to to that previous editing style. So yeah. I'm curious about um, Blackmagic RAW format. I have not got a shoot with ProRes RAW, and that's of course that is a um, just recently Panasonic announced that the S1H, which is a camera I don't have, but it's definitely a candidate now can shoot in ProRes RAW through the so, Atmos. Five. Yeah, I was going to, so, so basically it can output a RAW signal that the Atmos can record. Right. Yeah, and that's the tricky thing. I mean, uh, so Blackmagic RAW, so I love, I don't shoot in Blackmagic RAW. Um, I've experimented with it. The only time I shoot in Blackmagic RAW is on, I have the Pocket 4K, which I think is pound for pound the better camera. Uh, even though the resolutions aren't as high. Um, occasionally, the, the Pocket 4K can shoot Blackmagic RAW at 2.8K at 120 frames per second. Mm. And so occasionally, I will pop it if I know I'm doing a, a, very, a very high frame rate shot, and it's going to be you know 10 seconds long. I'll shoot it in B-RAW. 
I'll import it into Resolve and just convert it to ProRes 444. Um, and then I, and then I kick it over to Final Cut and it's still got most of the color information and all that stuff. Um, so I do use it occasionally, but I just shoot everything in ProRes, honestly. And, and I love it and it works great and it looks fantastic on that camera. Um, it's, um, one of the things that, uh, about ProRes RAW that bugs me is it seems like the conceit of it is, is currently, yeah, get this camera that can output a raw signal and record it in your Atomos. And it's like, well, I don't, you have one and that's great. I don't, and I kind of don't want one. I want to be able to just like plug my USB C drive into my black magic 4k and shoot straight to S SSD. Why can't they bake that as a, as an option in and, I mean, it gets all into like the codec wars and all that stuff. And that's, that's frustrating. But to get back to your question, like my, first of all, I love my Blackmagic 4k camera. I really have loved just about every Blackmagic camera I've ever used. Um, and the Blackmagic Ursa, you know, supports all the flavors of ProRes all the way up to XQ, which is like the 1.2 gigabit per second bit rate file. Um, but even on the pocket 4k and 6k like i can shoot i can shoot 4k 60 prores and it's kind of like actually you can shoot 4k dci like 78 frames per second there's they they did a software update that gives you this kind of bizarre frame rate but they're just pushing it as far as it can go um and while i would love what i hope is that one day final cut supports b-raw and magically my camera is kind of unlocked and it's like i have a new camera now for now that's not the case but i still love what i have that's how i would describe it yeah you know i think that's you know from the podcasts and articles i've read you know i've what i see is you know black magic has their raw format and you know apple has you know the ProRes raw or atmos you know is, is using ProRes raw and so there's there's like the sense that they they can't they don't want to support the other at least for the yeah. time being i think it's mostly just a, a matter of selfishness and wanting to promote and and uh you know become the the source of of that raw codec but you know um but see like for me i don't have a camera i mean i have the atomos ninja 5 which can of course you know i can at this time with my gh5 or an s1 you know, I can um, record to the Ninja 5 the SS on the SSD, you know, ProRes, which is great. Um, but if, you know, again, moving forward, it's like, is it that essential to record in ProRes RAW or uh, B-RAW? Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. So what I was going to say about that is, because you're right, you're deaf, you're speaking my language. Um, the pro The thing that stinks is, Okay, I, I have made an effort to get to know Resolve better so that I could work with B-RAW and manipulate it. And the thing that bugs me, and this is one reason why I like Final Cut, is I'm a super duper visual editor. Like when I'm, if I'm color grading or whatever, it's, I mean, yes, I use scopes, but like, it's still visual. It's like, I need visual tactile feedback. I need to drag sliders and curves and I need to see it. Um, in Resolve, when you work with B-RAW, it's very numerical. Mm. It's very, here's a drop-down menu, and here's some options under that drop-down menu, and you can click through those options. Or here's over here where you can change the numerical value of something, and it's like, for me, that's that's not how I work in like click, click downs and drop downs and um, you know, changing the clip settings. It's like, I want to just drag and I want to, and that's why I do want to use ProRes RAW because ProRes RAW is built like that. ProRes RAW is like, hey, this isn't numerical, but we're going to give you a raw signal and you can manipulate it like you're working with any other clip. Um, so um, that's what bugs me about trying to use B-RAW in Resolve. It's a very, it's a very um, IT feeling process 
Yeah, I think that would that would definitely draw or like push me further away because yeah. not only you know if I okay if I were to invest into a black magic camera that can shoot B raw, well the only way to take advantage of it would be to learn resolve like you said to some to some extent, but now you know I I um I always like to you know try to do things in in one trip, right? It's like yes. I final cut, I import my footage. I make my initial cuts and I have a process and I don't go to other programs. I don't either. I like to stay in the app. It's I stay in the app. Right. And, um, that is something that I really cherish as a video editor, just to have everything in front of me. And I know resolve is a, is a fantastic, um, has a fantastic suite of tools yep. all in there. But for me, I just don't see myself abandoning final cut at any time. So if that's the case, then it really, you know, the, the sake of buying a black magic camera for the sake of B-Raw, it seems, seems illogical for me. However, purchasing the camera for the sake of the quality uh, and, and the performance, you know, that, that seems to be the better argument. Yeah, and, and, the, and, and, and the, the ProRes that it shoots is great. I mean, it shoots up to, up to, up to HQ, so like... It's 422 color space. Um, I mean, it grades fine. If you're going to do heavy, 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 like VFX type grading, you probably need a camera that shoots 444 or higher, which the Ursas do. Um, yeah. But I mean, for what it costs, you're coming from a micro four thirds world, right? Right. So you, you probably have a ton of lenses already, or at least a handful. You know, th th that's that's a that's a really um, hey uses those. Yeah, th this is a this is a, um, a kind of a funny topic because originally, I actually gosh years ago was a Canon guy, mm. and so me too, I me had, too. Yeah, I had a T three I, and that was my my really my first uh, DSLR, and yeah. um, and so I think at some point I started investing in nice canon glass the the l series class yeah. and so um that was the issue when i came across the gh5 i needed to buy you know an adapter so i purchased the metabones one yep. and now that i have the s1 uh which is uh, i think it's the is it the l mount or it has its new yeah yeah new lenses with uh you know different brands so the whole point is you know i got I, I love the Canon glass. Um, I've always thought it's, 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 it's great. Um, but, and I, and I noticed I was checking out the black magic, uh, the six K here and it's, you know, Canon EF, EFS, so I'm thinking, Oh, well, you know, do you still have that glass? And I still have that glass. So, okay. you know, this, and, and again, I've, um, it's, I guess it's two ways. One, I thought, well, perhaps I should just like sell all my Canon glass and get, yeah. you know, transition to full frame i'm with panasonic it would make sense but then um because i have the gh5 and i have you know a 50 you got the 1635 i've got all these different lenses um that work with the gh5 with the metabones it's like well i'm going to keep them around for the time being so moving so, forward yes well okay so i was going to ask is do you still have your metabones mm -hmm. and you still have your ef glass yep and is your Metabones, wait, is your Metabones, your Metabones is a four thirds to L mount? Yeah. Okay. Uh, to the, the EF. So of course, the EF, EF to micro four thirds or EF to L? It'd be, no, it'd be micro four thirds to L. Okay, micro four thirds to L. Um, okay, sorry, I thought what you're gonna say is that your Metabones was EF to micro four thirds because suddenly your Canon glass is all available to you again. No, um, no, no. If you, yeah, no, you're right. No, it's okay. it's 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 the it's micro four thirds to EF. Okay, what what I think is cool about um, wait, so it's sorry, it goes from a micro four thirds lens to an EF mount, or from an EF mount to a micro four thirds, or from EF lens. Yeah, from okay. EF lens to micro four thirds. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. So you're already set up to use, for instance, the Pocket 4K. Forget about the 6K for a second. Uh, the Pocket 4K is a micro four-thirds mount, but you already have a Metabones that will adapt those EFs to a micro four-thirds. Right. And 
the Pocket 4K will has all the electronic control. So you will be able to adjust all your irises and all that stuff through the MetaBands. It sounds like you also probably own some four thirds glass as well from your GH5 days, or does GH5 have the L mount? No, the the GH5. That's that's what I use. Um, I use the MetaBones on the GH5, and so okay. I use the Canon glass with the GH5, the S1, because they transition to a whole new. Um, I forget like the L Alliance or right so new mount altogether with. Um, uh, different different brands uh, that Panasonic is kind of uniting with. Um, the, the Canon glass isn't compatible. I would need to purchase okay. another adapter. Um, and so I, I ref, you know, I didn't do that because I thought, well, you know, maybe I'm just going to transition to a new camera, new new glass in the future. So yeah, so yeah, you're right. I mean, I'm I'm in a position where that that glass would be compatible with, you know, the Black Magic, and that is definitely. I mean, from a financial standpoint, a, a really um, strong yeah. point. The, um, in the, I mean, the flip side to it is also that, like, I bought, I bought, like, the two, I have a bunch of EF glass as well, and I have a Metabones. Um, so I have, I have, like, three EF lenses that I can use with my um, Blackmagic. I also, though, over time, over about a year, I bought, like, the two nice Lumix um micro four thirds lenses the like the the, the essentially the 2470 and the 7200 right. um because they're smaller they're lighter and because they can be electronically controlled it opens up bluetooth control over for focus and stuff like that so there's a there's apps that will control your lenses on your phone and so now you can like sort of do follow focus, but on your phone and you can preset focus points. And so then you can like tell it to execute and you can do a camera move and that lens is focusing for you. Um, and I think, I think there's, there's a huge world of opportunity through Bluetooth control on those cameras. So that's, that's all related directly to the 4K. This is why I say pound for pound, it's better. On the 6K, which is EF only, the the app makers who make those Bluetooth apps have very publicly said we can't do it on those. And that it's not that it's not possible, it's that Black Magic doesn't allow it. And they think Black Magic doesn't allow it because you know, a lot of EF lenses don't have electronic focus ability. They're fully manual. Um especially older ones. I think some of the new stuff does. But anyway, it's a whole like rigmarole of saying like, oh, because I have fallen in love with that feature with being able to like adjust my focus, do an A, B, and a C point and change the durations between those racks, you know, and stuff like that. And I just like, if I had the 6K and I couldn't do that, I'd be like, oh man, I really like that feature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's, um, I think there's definitely a lot of, possibilities there and you know it's it again it's like um well just i think it was yesterday maybe two days ago where they had this price drop on the 6k yeah it's like a 20 percent drop yeah so i'm i mean i would you know if there was a price drop on the 4k i mean that would make it even i mean it's already is at a great um price point um i've i've always been you just kind of shocked with you know black magic pricing versus like canon yeah. um you know, even Panasonic, you know, the, the, the full frame cameras now are, are getting more pricey. So it's like, well, maybe it's time to, you know, try something out, something new. Um, yeah. The other, th the other thing that is interesting about using um, a Metabones with EF on a 4K um, is that it really, what's funny is that the Metabones ends up giving you a very full frame look. Um, which to me is a little silly when people are like, I want that full frame look. I'm sometimes like, I can't tell the difference, but I can tell the difference. <laughs> um, and so I've seen a lot of side by side tests of like the 6K versus a 4K with a Metabones on it. And it's, it's true. Like the, the 4K creates a more sort of widescreen full frame look than the 6K even does, um, which is again like another another feather in its cap um I, but i agree like if that 
I already have a 4K. I also have the original pocket camera, which I still love actually, even though it only shoots 1080p. Um, but if they dropped the price of the 4K, I might grab a second one just because. I mean, it's such, you're right. Black Magic gives you so much quality for what they're charging you. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm on B and H right now, and it look like it looks like it retails about thirteen hundred. But I mean, gosh, that's 13, the that's the that's the regular price. Yeah, uh, but still, I mean, the regular price is insanely inexpensive. I mean, for oh know, yeah, it's a it's a great deal. Yeah, because B and H even had a deal yesterday. I'm looking at it too, um, where you could get like. It, or it might have been it might have been Adorama, where for like thirteen fifty, you got like a cage and some doohickeys to go with your cage and that stuff. And I was like, wow, that's that's a pretty good deal. Uh, must have been Adorama because I don't see it um, right now. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. I mean, the one thing you do want is this is the part where I'll say you do want extra bat. You either want extra batteries or if you already use external batteries for powering your cameras, make sure you get something that allows you to use it with this camera. Um, I use Sony NF batteries. Those like, um, the, the info lithium batteries, um, not, 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 not the, um, not like a V mount, but just like kind of an old school Sony, Sony. I might have one around here somewhere. Um, but I, I have a little sled that docks into this and I can shoot. And so it gives me about two hours of use on a battery, um, maybe three even. And I'm, and I'm using like knockoff batteries. I'm not using nice Sony batteries. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good to know. I mean, I've, I've probably been spoiled with Panasonic batteries the last three years because the GH5 and the S1 have great battery life. I've never had, I mean, I have, probably three or four batteries um or the gh5 i think i have like four the s1 i have three but i i mean gosh in in a typical shoot um i'm never concerned about battery life but that's a good thing to bring up because i know like with sony and then um black magic um if you know that's the case with battery life i want to be aware of well you know, and then the other thing too is and granted i know you do like a lot of weddings and stuff like that so you're outside but the, the reality is also that you can plug the pocket 4k in i mean it it does have a power cord so if you are oh, yeah. shooting so if you are shooting somewhere where there simply is power you just plug that right. sucker in and you're good to go right i would uh, you know you can always rent one they're really they're really inexpensive to rent um Gosh, I want to say, I mean, I'm like she now. Now I've got to. I don't want to make a liar out of myself, but um, pocket. I'm curious what a week at the, the place I rent from around here. I'm curious. Yeah, you can you can get a seven day insured rental for 107 bucks, or you could get a three day. You could get a three day rental for 83 dollars. I mean, it's like you know, yeah. Um, it's awesome. yeah, it's you know, if you want to try one, but. It's um, yeah, they're it's really cool. I, I'm a I'm a huge fan. I, I I so I used to work in television in a day where we were all shooting on beta cams, like on our shoulders and stuff. And I I I I kind of refuse to use large equipment now um, because I went through that phase of a career. Um, and so I I just love handheld size things. We have an Ursa at work, and it's a really good camera. Having said that, I sometimes I'm like, oh, this thing is so big, which is funny because it's not that big. Um, <laughs> so I just love stuff like this. And I, I don't know that ever is a strong word, but I don't know that I will ever buy a bigger camera than this. I may rent one, but I don't think I'll buy a bigger camera than that. Yeah, yeah, you, you really can't go wrong with the mobility, the compactness. I, for me, you know, the GH5. When I purchased it, I, I, I thought, oh my goodness, this is so small. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, compared to you know, like when I, I would, I was using I think the 5D Mark III for a time, and I just, yeah, the weight difference, um, the, for travel, um, it just made so much more sense. And so, yeah, I'm not, I can't imagine using a larger camera. Um, again, maybe in a rental situation or a one-time deal, but um, I do enjoy, you know, having the camera um, available to me. It's 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 lightweight, ready to to rock and roll, 
in a matter of seconds. So yeah. the other thing is using being able to use a lightweight gimbal because I've shot a I've shot a lot of stuff over the years on the two handed Ronin, like the full size Ronin. And to be able to go to the Ronin S and just which is, you know, larger than your smallest gimbals, but still is like, I mean, that's just I'll never use one of these again. <laughs> Like, right. <laughs> I'll never, I mean, it's, it's awful. It's awful. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, so many reasons why, um, I will, I just can't, ugh, like full size, like large stuff just gives me the heebie jeebies. Yeah, um, no, no, I, I have a, I, I, my experience with the Ronin S has always been just fantastic. I've used the, the, you know, the two handed one, I think like once or twice when I was just, um, you know, volunteering, I was helping out uh, another filmmaker and, you know, that was, that was, an, that was a pretty intense workout. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, the technology just, it continues to improve and I'm definitely going to check out the, the black magic 4k, see, maybe I'll just rent it. You know, I have the, you know, I, I have the lenses, I have everything I need to, to, you know, give it a test run. And then, yeah, you could that, certainly, you could certainly put it through its paces, you know, like you, even with over three days, because you know what you're doing, like you can put it through its paces. Um, the, uh, the biggest thing you'll run into is battery life. If you're running off, if you're running off the little LPE six Canon batteries that it uses, cause it'll, you know, a, a good one of those that's in good shape will last you 45 minutes. Um, crappy ones will last you you know 25 or 30 um having said that i mean i use all knockoffs and i get in my i keep mine in pretty good shape and it it lasts 40 or 45 minutes and i know it's going to happen it's not a surprise to me so i've got five of them you know or whatever you know so i've got a, i've got a ton with me um or i've got my sony thing that i've got docked in and i have mine in a little half cage and so i i can dock my sony thing into the top of it and then I just plug into the AC power and boom, good to go. Um, but, uh, oh, the, um, and also the, the Ronin S now can power. There's a cable that will power the camera off the Ronin S. Um, mm. Now, granted, it, it will, you know, a Ronin S battery usually lasts all day long. Now it only is going to last three and a half hours. But still, you're powering, you're powering that camera without having to worry about a battery drop and, and having to change it, take it off the gimbal. Right. Right. So hmm. I don't know. That's, that's, uh, that's all I got. Um, and this won't be news to you, but the people that really get worked up over the battery life situation are people that don't realize that sort of in, in real filmmaker world, you are usually having to find some sort of power source. You're either powering, you're either powering over plug, or you're powering over like an Antenbauer gold mount battery or a Sony V mount. Like this is not news to people who, you know, people who are used to using cameras that generate really good image quality, um, right. you know, cinema level image quality. Kind of know like, yeah, power is a thing. So it doesn't surprise me that this thing shoots through batteries but i have a solution for that because i know what i'm doing and i you know it's not like oh my gosh i'm out shooting this thing i had no idea this battery wasn't going to last that long <laughs> like that's usually the mark of like somebody that is maybe bit off more than they could chew in terms of camera right so but you're neither you nor i are going to have that problem no no 